everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my continued coverage of the HTC Desire mobile phone. This is my questions and answers video part 3. This is in direct response to some of the questions I've been getting in the comments of the videos. Uh, so thank you very much to everyone who's posted questions. I can't answer them all here, but I will in fact answer as many as I can. Now the first one that came up was with regards to multitasking. And thanks to some of the comments I received, I actually learnt something new. Switching between applications, I've always gone backwards and forwards between them. But you can in fact hold in the home button and it will bring up uh, a window in the middle of your screen and it will show you the last six used applications. So for example, I can tap on Peep and this will take me back to my Twitter application. Press and hold again. I can go to my TV guide. And these are all running already in the background, so switching between them is extremely fast. And then on to perhaps internet. Now this brings me nicely onto another question which was really just asking if I can show some of the web browsing on the HTC Desire. Well here I'm actually on my Geekanoids website. I can scroll up and down through the various content. I can pinch to zoom. And with the HTC handsets what it actually does is any graphical elements it leaves at full size so they're actually showing off the edge of the screen as you can see here but it does reflow the text so this is really nice because if I zoom in again I don't have to now scroll left and right to read the actual content of the text I can actually just scroll up and down so it reflows everything and again if I zoom out it reflows every time I zoom out so a really nice way of reflowing text I can also turn the handset into landscape mode and this makes viewing a lot easier. And the actual speed of the browser is very quick indeed. This is a video that's actually embedded into uh, my website and it automatically launches the YouTube application and plays the video within the YouTube app. And then if I go back, then I'm straight back to the website that I was viewing. Pushing the menu button brings up some options. I can go backwards and forwards, add a bookmark, look at my open windows. I can go to my already saved bookmarks or I can tap more. And in here, I've got the option of going to my home page. I can find a certain segment on the page, uh, text selection or get information about the page. Now I'm going to just quickly pop out to my home screen. And if I go a couple of screens to the right, this actually launches uh, this particular home screen, the bookmark widget, which is what I've already set the screen up populated with. And this is actual live updated bookmarks. And as you can see, my Geekanoids website is there. I've got Google, Google Mobile Products and Web and & Walk, which is a T-Mobile bookmark. And I can tap on the bookmark and that automatically launches the browser and I'm straight back into internet browsing. So really nice experience. Now whilst I'm still in the web browser, I was also asked about copying and pasting. Well here's a section of text, I can actually tap and hold. It brings up a little magnifying area on the screen, so I can find the right word or right start point for where I want to copy and paste. Then when I let go, it then changes to two little dots, top and bottom. The word the is highlighted, and if I want to drag the bottom dot, I can actually extend the copied area right down to a whole sentence. So now this highlighted green colour is the area I'm going to be copying. And I've got three choices. I can either search for this segment of text, I can either share it, or I can simply push this icon on the left and it copies that text to the clipboard, which I could then paste into a text. Now this very nicely brings me on to another question, which is about texting. So let's uh, go to a new message and tap to compose. And if I tap and hold, I can actually paste that text I just copied from the website. So a very quick and easy way of copying and pasting into a text. The actual question I received about texting was regarding the languages whilst typing. Well, if I tap on a little uh, cogwheel there and you've got keyboard language 
tap on keyboard language and these are all of the choices that I've got whilst typing. Now you have to excuse my pronunciation on some of these but we have got Sestina, Thanks, which is Danish, Dutch, English, Spanish, French, Italian, uh, Netherlands, Norsk, Polsk, or Polsky, sorry, which is Polish, Portuguese, Svenska, Turkish, and then two more down here. I would imagine that these are uh, Polish. I'm really not sure on these bottom two. You have to excuse me not knowing that, but there are two additional languages down the bottom here for keyboard languages. So I hope that answers that question about the keyboard languages. So let's go back out to the home screen. And then I also had some questions about memory usage and battery usage. If I tap on settings and then go all the way down to about phone and then I can get up battery information. It says the actual battery level and then I've got battery use so I can actually tap on that and it gives me a breakdown percentage wise as to what applications have been using the battery on my phone. So as you can see uh, the HTC Sense Live wallpapers have actually used 3% of my battery power. Uh, this clears every time you actually um, charge the phone. So this is from a clear uh, charge, which I took the phone off charge about half an hour ago. And it, and it just gives you a breakdown. So at the end of the day, I'll get a really good idea of what applications have actually been using my battery. And then if we go back a couple of steps here, and another question I had was about application usage. So I can tap on applications and here I've got uh, manage applications or running services. If I tap on manage applications, it will actually populate the screen with a list of applications that are installed on the handset. And somebody was asking, you know, is the installed memory on here enough to install whatever applications he wanted to use? Well. If I just take a quick run through here, the, the live wallpapers are only taking up 4 kilobytes. Calendar storage is taking up 60 kilobytes and calendar 8 kilobytes. Uh, Check-in service 168 kilobytes, so all very small amounts of memory. If I go further down, you will see that my download manager is taking up 84 kilobytes, so very small amounts of memory. Flickr, 604 kilobytes. Another one there, Google Mail, so 600 kilobytes for that. Google Mail storage, uh, almost one megabyte. So not a great deal of storage at all, but if I was installing something like a sat-nav application, then maybe that's going to take up a lot more. My internet is taking up 8.39 megabytes, so that's some of the cached files. Google Maps, 7.05 megabytes. So a couple of larger applications there. So in total, not a great deal being taken up. There you go, photos 10.75, but that includes the ones I've taken with the camera. And if I was transferring those to a computer, obviously that would go down. Shop Savvy and Spotify, just over 2.3 megabytes each for those. So a reasonable amount of storage being taken up by some of the apps, but plenty of room still to install more. Now just one last question came up from one of the comments and that is regarding music. The question was does the Desire Sport a cover flow type feature like we find on the uh, HD2 and I suppose you could also uh, say it's similar to the iPod Touch and iPhone. Well yes it does. It doesn't seem to switch round to landscape mode so it only works in portrait mode. But here I've selected all of my music and I can indeed flick through. Um, some of them have got cover art supported, some of them I couldn't seem to get the cover art working. But you can certainly flick through track by track and it will show you the cover art uh, when appropriate. And then when you find one you want to play, you can just simply tap on play and it will start playing. So yes, it does support cover flow uh, type feature similar to the iPhone, iPod Touch and the HTC HD2 but maybe not quite as uh, usable as something like the iPhone or iPod Touch. I must admit that the music player is pretty good, it's adequate, but I'm not liking it as an experience quite as much as the iPhone.
Well, thank you very much for all your questions. Please do post any more questions you've got on this particular video, post them in the comment section, and I will try and either answer them by responding to your comment, or indeed if I get enough questions that are relevant, then I will make another video uh, for some further questions and answers. Thanks very much for watching. Please do come back and check out more video reviews on the Geek Annoyed channel. This video review is sponsored by Crucial, the memory experts. They provide reliable PC, notebook and Mac memory to boost your system performance and improve your general workflow.